thousand years in India to go from Aryabhat to Madhav, claimed by Newton. And uh, how did it happen overnight in Europe? Obviously, they cheated. So the question then is, did Europeans steal calculus from India? <coughs> now, there are two questions here. First question is, was it calculus at all? A lot of people contested that, so I'm putting it up front. Once you decide whether it was calculus or not, then you can ask the question of whether they stole. So most people, how do they do calculus? They do integrals and derivatives, formulae, only of elementary functions. So if you take a non-elementary function, as in my pre-test question paper, they don't know how to do it. So here's a non-elementary function. Here's a non-elementary integral. This is a Jacobian elliptic function. They don't know how to do it because it's not taught. It's not there in any of the fact calculus texts. So they identify symbolic computation of derivatives and integrals with calculus. Especially that is what the foolish colonized mind does, which is taught to ape the superior West. But there are no integrals or derivatives in the tradition. Where are the signs for integral? There's a sign for derivative. So how was it calculus? And this is a doubt which many people came, say, and barred. A.K. Bhag, who has done a lot for uh, history of mathematics in India, who was the uh, Insa, he said, he, uh, he, I had written a paper on transmission of calculus, which was submitted to the Indian Journal of History of Science. He said, I personally feel that the question of transmission of calculus from India to Europe is basically a hypothetical issue. Uh, what are you talking about? Calculus didn't exist in India. Where are the integrals? Where are the derivatives? Tell me. So that is a critical question which even people who are well versed to the Indian tradition don't understand. And nobody else has pointed out, I don't know why, but then if you start teaching calculus on the Indian method, you immediately come to the answer, but we don't teach it. We avoid it. We are going to imitate the superior best. We are going to feel superior by imitating them. So that also brings in a crucial question of Aryabhat versus Madhav. So today we attribute the origin of calculus to Madhav and Kerala school, that is wrong. That is how Wish first noticed it. And they have uh, infinite series, but you can't teach calculus based on infinite series. I mean, I also started my research based on that assumption because that's a popular view. So this was my project, which was uh, about uh, Madhav and the uh, origin of the calculus. All right. So I started with that idea, but it's a wrong idea. I corrected myself when I started teaching calculus without limit. You can't attribute it to Madhav because you have to teach it the way Aryabhat did it. So calculus due to Aryabhat, Madhav gave the same 24 sign values. He gave them precise to the third sexagesimal minute, Tatpara. But Aryabhat had given those same 24 sign values thousand years earlier, less precise only up to the Kala, first sexagesimal minute. So critical difference. Madhav gives sign values. Those are sign values. All right actual values. But Aryabhat gives only sign differences. So Aryabhat sign table looks like this. No, I mean, there's only one word of Sanskrit in it. So it is um, uh, Aryabhat sign table. There's only one word, which is Kala Arzhaja. Kala Arzhaja. So sign so it's actually sign differences, Khandaja, but he says Arzhaja. So they are only sign differences. What are those words? What do they mean? They mean these numbers. So they are not sign values, they are sign differences. So that's a very critical difference because Indians used finite differences, not derivative. So you have at least got the finite difference. Whether you should have the derivative or not, second question, why should you have the derivative? Why should you imitate the West? Finite differences work perfectly well for all practical purposes. For everything that I did in CDAC, every differential equation that I solved on a computer is done by finite differences. You don't need anything else. You don't need derivative. That comes from a Western superstition. We'll go to that. So do not assume that they are better or superior. So how were they derived? He derived them by means of a recurrence relation, not an algebraic relation. Now I'll just go through it. This is the recurrence relation. This is done in my book in great detail, it is not an algebraic equation. Let's be very clear about it. And it is what is called the Euler method. This is also explained in my book, Cultural Foundations of Mathematics. Uh, Euler method, you can add an H, which is what Neil Kunt did, and that gives you some greater accuracy. That is how there was uh, accuracy to the 
third sexual adjustment phase. So I won't go into that. Uh, the point is that yet Euler was familiar with Indian mathematical text. It was not some independent discovery. He was familiar with Indian mathematical text. He knew he solved Fermat's challenge problem, which nobody else could solve because it was a solved exercise in Bhaskar. And he knew that text. And therefore, nobody else could solve it. All right. We don't go into these things because Tim Proctor will tell us some uh, nonsense about what Euler did, and we believe her. Never believe the best. Challenge it, check it, check it. Only when you have checked it yourself, you should believe. Okay. So, no need for derivatives. What about integrals? You don't need them either because you need those finite differences. You solve differential equations. That is what Aryabhat did. He solved the differential equation for. Numerically solved, the differential, you can't have exact solutions. You, you can't have even, you, even sign function, etc. It's not exact. Infinite seeds. So he numerically solved a differential equation. And that is the heart of the calculus. Every application of calculus that you have got, every problem of Newtonian physics that you have got involves a solution of differential equation. Also true of quantum mechanics, I'm not doing that. So corollary, you don't. Need the derivative sign, you don't need the integral sign. That is just your indoctrination. That calculus is about in the integral signs and uh, derivative sign. So you just solve the differential equation, y prime equal to fx, you get the independent integral, the integral to x, f t dt. Right? That's it. You don't need an integral sign. You don't need that. You've got all the practical applications and doing everything fine. It's perfectly clear. You don't have to worry about uh, limits and real numbers and so on. And I have been writing about this for so long. Nobody seems to have understood. I am really surprised. So this way of doing calculus, I would say, is superior. That's why I teach it for all real-life practical applications, since there is no need to restrict fx to be an elementary function. So I gave the example of uh, Jacobian elliptic function. This is asked in my test. So here are the uh, Jacobian. Where are the Jacobian elliptic functions? Oh no, this is not asked in. Uh, okay. This is about the simple pendulum. The simple pendulum, you get the wrong formula t equal to 2 pi root over L by G. This is your first scientific experiment. And you give the wrong formula, you, and people believe the formula, they don't trust their observation because that is the essential teaching. Don't trust the pratyak. You trust the theory, trust authority, trust Shabda Praman, not the pratyak. All right, so we give a wrong formula, and everybody repeats it. I had to have such a big fight. And uh, my son did a school project from that. And ah, it is here. So the formula is not compatible. And here is the whole, you can see the whole project that the time period of the simple pendulum changes with the amplitude. You can observe it. You'll find the observations here. You'll find the theory here. You'll find the Jacobian elliptic function. That's the way I teach calculus. All right, this is a key aspect of how you teach calculus today. But we don't want it. We want to ape the West. That is our fundamental principle. We want to ape the West. All right. So point is, Euler method is linear interpolation, extrapolation. Brahmagupta introduced quadratic interpolation. So he said, those traditional sign values are good enough. Why do you want to go to 24 values? And uh, you can do that. And that went on to, uh, well, Vateshwar went to uh, uh, quadratic interpolation, a Sterling formula, took a table of 96 values and achieved precision to second sex adjustments. And that is what is carried forward by Madhav and Kerala school, who used 11th, 12th order interpolation to achieve precision to third minute. So they refined it. Certainly they contributed to it. All right. But Aryabhat and Brahmagupta invented it. This was a refinement. You can still do all calculus with just the Euler method. Okay. So uh, there is there's just a postscript. Aryabhat was a Dalit. I have a paper on that. You can read it. And unlike uh, Nilkant, who was a high caste Prambhuzari Brahmin, there's a political angle, right? And uh, to my mind, it's a splendid testimony of regional integration and the fact that caste was not oppressive in India. That Nilkant, who's the Soma Sutwan, can accept Aryabhat, can accept to be a disciple, would be is a very great thing. North and South. We are in the North, Kerala is in the South, but I won't go further into 